During co-translational import into the endoplasmic reticulum, the protein is translocated into the ER simultaneously with translation. A ribosome translates the mRNA sequence into a protein made of amino acids. As the signal sequence on the end terminus of the growing polypeptide chain emerges from the ribosome, a signal recognition particle, or SRP, binds to it, arresting translation. The SRP then brings the ribosome and growing polypeptide complex to the SRP receptor located at the ER membrane. GTP binds to both SRP and the SRP receptor as the ribosome then interacts with the translocon. The translocon channel adjacent to the receptor then opens for the polypeptide chain to enter into the ER. Translation continues. When the SRP and receptor dissociate from the translocon, they hydrolyze their GTPs and prepare for another cycle. The polypeptide chain is then inserted into the ER through the translocon. The signal sequence is cleaved by signal peptidase and the chain continues to elongate through the channel. When translation is complete, the ribosome releases from the complex and the protein folds into its native state within the lumen. The fact that protein import into the ER lumen is a co-translational process can be proven by a simple experiment. First, proteins are allowed to synthesize without the presence of a microsome. When microsomes are added later, the proteins do not incorporate into the microsomes. The N-terminal sequence, which signals for import into the ER, is not removed. However, when translation occurs in the presence of microsomes, the protein is incorporated into the microsomes and the signal sequence is cleaved. This proves that protein synthesis cannot be completed before incorporation into the ER. The SEC61 complex is a two-dimensional channel that acts as a translocon to transport proteins across the membrane. It is composed of three subunits, SEC61 alpha, beta, and gamma. To ensure successful transport of the proteins, the complex is responsible for forming a tight bond with the ribosome. This bond prevents small molecules such as ATP and calcium from traversing the membrane. SEC61 directs proper transmembrane domain orientation by opening both perpendicularly and laterally. When the complex binds to a ribosome, a plug with a charged tail from the alpha subunit is released from a hydrophobic collar ring so the polypeptide from the ribosome can transverse the membrane. When the hydrophobic domain of a transmembrane protein enters the complex, it is more favorable for the polypeptide to exit the complex and enter the lipid bilayer. This happens by a lateral gate opening so the protein can exit the complex sideways, upon which the plug returns to its original position. Let's look at SEC61 from the lumen. The plug is released from the collar ring, allowing the polypeptide to enter perpendicularly. When the hydrophobic domain of a protein enters, a gate in the complex swings open laterally, allowing the polypeptide to exit to the lipid bilayer and the plug to be replaced. In type 1, the ribosome and polypeptide chain complex associate with a translocon in the ER membrane and the N-terminal signal sequence is cleaved. The chain elongates until the hydrophobic stop transfer anchor sequence synthesizes as it enters the translocon, where it prevents the polypeptide chain from extruding further into the ER lumen. The stop transfer anchor sequence moves laterally between the translocon subunits and becomes anchored in the phospholipid bilayer. As synthesis continues, the elongating chain may loop out into the cytosol through the small space between the ribosome and translocon. After synthesis is complete, the ribosomal subunits are released into the cytosol. Type 2 and type 3 proteins lack a cleavable N-terminal ER signal sequence. Instead, both possess a single internal hydrophobic signal anchor sequence that functions as both an ER signal sequence and a membrane anchor sequence. In type 2, after the internal signal anchor sequence is synthesized on the ribosome, it is bound to an SRP, which directs the ribosome and polypeptide chain complex to the ER membrane. The polypeptide chain becomes oriented in the translocon with its N-terminal portion toward the cytosol. This orientation is believed to be mediated by the positively charged residues showed N-terminal to the signal anchor sequence. As the chain elongates and extrudes into the lumen, the internal signal anchor moves laterally out of the translocon and anchors the chain in the phospholipid bilayer. At the completion of protein synthesis, the C-terminus of the polypeptide is released into the lumen and the ribosomal subunits are released into the cytosol. For type 3 proteins, the assembly is similar to type 2 except that 
positively charged residues on the C-terminal side of the signal anchor sequence cause the transmembrane segment to be oriented within the translocon with its C-terminal portion in the cytosol and the N-terminal portion in the ER lumen. Chain elongation in C-terminal side completes in the cytosol and the ribosomal subunits are released. In summary, only type 1 includes cleavage of the signal sequence. To determine the orientation of type 2 and type 3 transmembrane proteins, remember that the sequence of positive amino acids is always on the cytosolic side.